The great news is that volcanoes give off all sorts of warning signs that scientists can watch and so they'll be able to predict eruptions. And understanding them involves a simple picture like this of a magma's plumbing system. But wait, before we get started, this is a picture from Encyclopedia Britannica. And sometimes pictures in books can mislead you. Uh, the depth between the surface and the mantle in many, beneath many volcanoes is something like 40 kilometers. And most volcanoes are just 1 or 5 kilometers, but this looks like the, the volcano is equal size to the crust. That's pretty crazy. And then the other thing is this huge main vent is so wide that would make it so easy to understand volcanoes and to see what they were doing if it was that big. But it's more like this picture that I've drawn on the right where I've taken their same colors and there's this really narrow conduit here which makes it like a needle in a haystack much more than this picture makes it look like. So we're going to use a picture like the one on the right. And here's my drawing of it using uh, slightly different colors. And as magma moves through this system, uh, rising up from the mantle into the magma chamber, through these different conduits and eventually up to the surface, different things can happen. And all those things can leave some sort of signal behind that we're going to be able to monitor. So the first one is the easiest to think about. It is the temperature increase. Of course, magma is hot, and so as it rises, it is warmer than the surrounding rock, and it will heat up gas, water, and even the soil on the ground. So let's watch what can happen. Let's say there's a rainstorm. It rains down, so there's going to be some water that fills up in the ground. Uh, that's the groundwater. It's naturally occurring. We'll be studying that later in our course. And some of that groundwater might seep along through faults down until it gets into magma chambers where it will warm up. When it warms up, of course, it's going to become less dense and it's going to rise back up. And so now we have hot water that can be recorded in the groundwater or even in some cases if it's along a very narrow fault, you might get a geyser, a lot like me standing next to this one here in Yellowstone. <laughs> 